For more than 20 years, I've been obsessed with guitars. From playing them, to working on them, to buying and collecting them, I've built quite the collection of awesome custom guitars. Now, I'm turning my passion into a profession by seeking out old, beat-up guitars and giving them new life, all while trying to make a profit. I'll be searching everywhere for used gear that I can refret, rewire, repaint, whatever it takes to make it a real shredder. This is Trash to Thrash. Randy Rhodes is widely recognized as being one of the top influential guitar players of all time. The way he infused classical theory into heavy metal changed everything for heavy metal lead guitarists. Tragically, he was taken from us at the age of 25 years old when he was aboard a plane that crashed during an Ozzy Osbourne tour in 1982. But his legacy lives on. He wrote some of the most iconic heavy metal riffs of all time, and his signature guitar, the Jackson Rhodes Flying V, became an extremely popular model because of its pointy and distinct shape. I had heard songs like Crazy Train and Diary of a Madman for my whole life, but it wasn't until I saw Kirk Hammett of Metallica playing a black Jackson Rhodes when I knew I had to have one. I got my first Jackson Rhodes when I was about 16 years old and I was hooked. Since then I've owned a bunch of them and I've rebuilt a bunch of them. This here is my original Rhodes body from when I was 16 years old. I used to play this guitar up on stage when I was a teenager in my band Luck Down. But now I've kind of outgrown the guitar. I've got a bunch of other nicer Rhodes and this one has been so beat up. It's a 1994 Jackson Concept Series, a JRR 94, and it's an amazing guitar, but it's time for me to give it some new life and pass it on to somebody new. I've actually picked up a couple other Rhodes recently, and all three of them are gonna get a makeover at the same time. Randy Rhodes had a really cool guitar collection. He was known for playing a Gibson Les Paul Custom, his traditionally shaped, a really cool polka dot finished Flying V, and then eventually he started working with Grover Jackson. The first Jackson guitar ever created was a collaboration between Randy Rhodes and Grover Jackson, where they literally sat down and sketched the guitar onto a napkin. What they came up with was the Jackson Concord, and it's the Flying V that Randy is most commonly known and seen with. But shortly after getting it, Randy came up with some design changes, and they came up with the new Randy Rhodes Jackson Flying V. It featured longer, sharper horns and a more vicious look to it. Sadly, Randy Rhodes passed away before the production models were completed. But Randy Rhodes' family worked with Grover Jackson to continue with production and releasing them to the public. These are the next three guitars I'll be rebuilding. Three different Rhodes. This one here is a 1992 Jackson Professional Series EX model. This one here is a 1994 Jackson Rhodes Concept JRR94 model. The Concept series were great guitars and they only made them for about a year. I've done quite a few rebuilds on them. And I actually have another one here in blue that I'll be part of the lineup of guitars that I'm going to be working on next. All three of these guitars need quite a bit of work. They're all from the 1990s, but they're great guitars, so they're perfect candidates for what I like to do. I built other 94 Jackson Rhodes concepts before, but we'll get back to this later and I'll tell you how I did these two paint jobs. These three Rhodes are going to keep me busy for quite a bit of time, so it's time to get started on them. The first one I'm going to start on is this 92 Rhodes EX Professional. The necks they used to put on these guitars were just amazing. Great maple necks, real hardwood. This one has a few features that drew me in right away, one of them being the floating bridge on it. I'm a sucker for a killer shred machine with a floating Floyd Rose style bridge. Another really interesting feature on this one is the blade pickup selector switch. Normally you find these on like a Strat style guitar and most Jackson Rhodes have a Les Paul style pickup selector switch. Another thing I really like about this model is there's no pick guard on it. So when I repaint this guitar, the whole surface of the guitar is gonna be painted instead of having some type of pick guard covering some of it up. All right, so the plan with this one is gonna be to start off by painting it satin white. Ever since I painted the Alien Blood Haxon, there's something about satin and matte colors that I'm just in love with. Next up, it's gonna be some new pickups. A set of EMG 81 and 85 pickups, also in white with matching pickup rings. This thing's already looking insane. But to make it even more insane, blood splatter. I'm gonna go with the crimson red blood splatter on this one. And I'm gonna mount the pickups before I do the splatter. So the pickups are gonna have the splatter on them too. And then we're gonna to top it off with an Iron Age kill switch black with a red LED. I got a feeling this is one of those guitars I'm going to build and it's going to be tough to sell because I'm going to want to keep it. 
I'm going to start working on this one at the same time. This one's going to be even crazier, so I don't want to reveal everything yet, but a hint is look in the background. It's going to get a paint job very similar to that. All right, enough talking. Let's get to work. The first step, as always, is to strip the guitar down, sand it, and then bondo it up. Bondo is a two-part filling compound that you mix together and apply with a putty knife to fill in all the chips and dings these guitars have acquired over the years. These guitars basically looked like the surface of the moon with all the craters and dents in them. The next step is to throw down a base coat of primer. And once you have a base coat on there, you can really see every little imperfection. So then I'll go back, use a little more Bondo, and sand everything perfect. Remember, these Jacksons are 1992 and 1994 models. So they're between 29 and 31 years old. That's almost as old as me. Maybe that's why I appreciate these 80s and 90s guitars so much. Now both guitars are resprayed and looking clean. It took a lot of work to fix the chipped corners on these ones. The pointy ends on Rhodes guitars really take a beating sometimes. These guitars also have bevels around all the edges, which same thing with those. To get those angles to look right, to sand them perfect, bond to them, and re-sand them is a real challenge. Here are the pickup rings after spraying them. They look amazing. These can be a bit of a challenge to get right because they're made of such slick plastic material that you really have to scuff them up with some sandpaper to get the paint to adhere to them. The pickups turned out amazing too. You can buy EMGs in white, but I painted the pickups and the pickup rings the exact same shade of white so that they're gonna match perfectly. The pickups already had some texture to the top of them, but the sides were really slick. So regardless of the texture or not, I still gave them a light sanding just to make sure the paint's going to adhere to them. Man, do these things look awesome mounted. The pickups are EMG 81 and 85s, which are a classic heavy metal set. I am seriously loving the way this thing looks. With the pickups mounted in the rings and that mounted to the guitar, this thing just looks so awesome. I also drilled the hole for the kill switch, so this thing is ready for some red blood splatter. All right, we're just moments away from throwing the blood on this guitar. I did the headstock already, and it looks awesome. The colors really look good together, but man, I get nervous doing this because this is like a make or break moment for this guitar. If the splatter comes out awesome, the guitar looks awesome. If something weird happens, you know, the splatter doesn't look so good, it all leads up to this moment, and it can go either way. It always goes good, so I'm not too worried about it. This thing looks so sharp, pure white. I mean, with these pickups on it, I always mount the pickups on so that when I throw the blood on, it's going to go across the rings, the pickups, everything. So, here we go. My basic process for splattering a guitar is to simply spray some paint into a cup. Then I stand back a few feet and just start throwing it on there. The amount of material that you spray into the cup and the distance you stand from the guitar are going to affect the way that the splatter looks. Even the amount of force that you use to throw it on the guitar is going to change the way that it hits the guitar and splatters. Throwing it from different directions is also going to make it look different. So there really is a lot of technique to it once you've done it a few times. The thickness of the material itself and even the temperature of the paint are additional variables when you're throwing splatter. But look at this thing. This one turned out excellent. Pretty much exactly what I was going for. Man, like I said, doing the blood splatters are make or break moment for these things. It makes me super nervous because you could just ruin the finish so easily, but... I love this one. This one turned out so awesome. Nice heavy splatter over here, a little light splatter over here. The contrast of the colors is good. A little bit came up on the sides here. Uh, we got a little drippage and a little splatter on the bottom. I mean, this thing, I like it. So, a successful splatter. After finishing up the body and painting the headstock, it's time to put a brand new Jackson logo on there. A nice clean white headstock with a bold black Jackson logo. It's also gonna get some black tuners, it's got the black truss rod cover, so there's gonna be some nice black accents on this headstock. But of course, to match the body, it's gonna need some blood splatter. I really love the way this guitar is turning out. The blood splatter looks so good, and I love the way it goes over the Jackson logo there. Looks awesome. I started wiring up the guitar and I realized there's not enough room inside the guitar for a battery, so I'm adding a Goto battery box to the back of the guitar. Normally I would do this before painting it. For this I used my trusty router, and it's actually some pretty serious guitar surgery, and it's a super big mess to do something like this. So I got the vacuum in one hand, the one horsepower Bosch router in the other hand, and time to be real careful and make sure to cut this hole very precise. 
the wires from the battery box route through a little hole that I drilled to connect the two cavities together, and it fits perfectly. The battery box can swing open and a little door opens that you put the 9 volt battery into and it locks back closed. And this guitar came together gorgeously. Look at that headstock with the tuners and the truss rod cover installed. I was telling you that the black accents were going to look good, but it looks even better than I expected. The painted EMG 8185 combination, the Iron Age kill switch with the red LED. I mean, this thing is just unbelievable. Certain guitars that I build, I don't mind when they don't sell right away because I get to play them, I get to look at them for a little bit, but I got a feeling this one's going to go really quick. The blood splatter on this thing just looks so awesome. It really does look like somebody cut themselves and dripped blood all over it. I mean, the white painted EMG pickups, the black Floyd Rose, the blade switch. This thing has so many cool features that you don't see on a lot of Rhodes guitars, and the lack of the pickguard really brings it together. What do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments what you think of this beast. All right, now it's time to throw some alien blood on this nice flat black body. I call it alien blood because it's neon green blood splatter, and... I imagine the aliens have neon green blood. After painting the alien blood Haxon with this same style paint job, I really missed those colors together and I wanted to do another one because I love the way that one turned out. If you look in the background, you're going to see that the paint booth is starting to get quite a bit of splatter built up around. And it looks pretty good in there. So the Rhodes looks cool, but it didn't turn out quite how I was hoping. I was wanting it to look more like the original hacks in here that I did. I wanted to have more thick blood like on this one, where you can see it's cracked and coagulated, and I decided to add some more to the roads. All right, guys, well, this sucks. I did the splatter job on this roads, and I do not like the way it turned out. Uh, I told you guys before that I get nervous sometimes because it's a make or break moment when you go to throw the splatter on, and I did it. It looked okay, but I thought it didn't look as good as the original alien blood that I did before, so I figured, Maybe we'll add a little more. The original Alien Blood had more blood on it. So I started adding more. It looked better. I'll, be, I'll give it that. Next day I looked at it again. It still it wasn't what I would want. I wouldn't buy it. So I figured, okay, maybe we'll add a little more on there. After throwing more and more and not liking it, scraping some off, doing it again, I finally come to the conclusion that I think it's better just to scrape it all off, sand it all down, and do it again. So it sucks to say... That I'm going to be doing that to this one, but you know, I don't want to put something out there that I don't like. The whole point of doing this is I'm building guitars that I would actually want and that look awesome. And why would I put something out there that's not as good as I would hope it for it to be? So, I'm going to go scrape it and respray it. And hopefully, somewhere uh, 24 to 48 hours from now, throw some more alien blood on it and have a way sweeter guitar than this. So, next time you see this thing, it should look a lot better than this. All right, well, they don't always go exactly as planned, but in the end, I know I'm going to get this one right. It looked great like this. I should have just left it like that. You live and you learn. Be sure to tune in next week to find out what happens with this guitar. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Be sure to hit the subscribe button. Hit that bell to be notified every week on Thursday when a new episode drops. Leave a comment down below and let me know what you thought about this episode. And be sure to help spread the word by telling all your friends and posting this on your social media. Word of mouth is huge with this show, and I've been seeing your guys' posts about it, and I really appreciate it. If you want your guitar featured on the show, then contact me. Information is down below. Email me, mark at guitarguts.com, or DM me on Instagram, at guitarguts. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next Thursday. Rock on, my friends.